Well, Baruch Hashem, uh, we are celebrating Purim today, the feast in which was established by our mother Esther, who uh, is the, one of the primary um, individuals in our story. Uh, we were deported um, out of the land of Israel, and the story of Purim is actually the story of our people, but it's also the story of, of all of humanity. Uh, when we disobeyed God, when we did not hearken unto him, uh, then he, uh, he cast us out of the land. I mean, what was the first example of that in the scriptures? God, in the Garden of Eden, right at the very beginning. Okay? They didn't obey God. Um, God gave them, well, he gave them several commandments, but he gave them one uh, of the quote-unquote negative commandments. In other words, don't do this. And, and what was that don't do? Okay, don't eat the tree. So he, he told them to fast from this, from this tree. Don't, don't eat it. Uh, and of course, we did. So he cast us out of the garden. When he brought us to the land of Israel, uh, he said, keep my commandments. If you keep my commandments, I'm, I'm going to do everything. I mean, I will take care of you. I, you will be, you'll be mighty, you will, you'll, and so on and so forth. And we didn't obey his commandments. And he cast us out again. So we find ourselves in this particular story in the land of Persia, uh, which is where everything is taking place within the scope of this story. Uh, if you turn over to the book of Esther, um, if you have a device, um, we'll be reading from the New King James Version. Uh, if you don't have, that's perfectly fine. Uh, you're welcome to just listen. Um, many of you have noisemakers, uh, which are uh, kind of a fun part of the whole um, celebration of Purim. So uh, for those uh, watching us who maybe have never participated in Purim, whenever we mention the name of Mordecai, yay! yay! And so we celebrate our father Mordecai. And when we say the name of the um, antagonist of the story, Haman, Woo! Woo! so you're going to hear a lot of yays and boos throughout that. And it's sort of what kind of punctuates. Uh, reader number one, if you could kind of be making your way up here. Uh, we have individual readers that will be reading each of the chapters. Uh, and so uh, you'll be able to um, kind of experience that. So um, there's some fun names. Uh, if, uh, if, you, if you have something written, um, or, oh, I guess I should have gotten a, I, I completely forgot to re request a, a mic, so I'm going to be the mic, so, so to speak. So I, I'm, I'm going to be a mic stand for the next little bit. So the, the beauty of this uh, is that we see our, our, our mother Esther, uh, who is the unlikely, uh, you could say, um, she, she, she didn't set out to be a hero. Uh, she didn't set out to be the, the person that was, would be instrumental. But she was encouraged by her... her um, thank you. Thank you for Rabbi Dan and, and Bill for act, acting very quickly. appreciate that. I can put this away now. Um, she acts quickly. Um, she makes a decisive moment. She has a choice. And in that choice, she made a moment which altered her life and also the lives of our people. And so likewise, we also have choices. You know, may we be as wise as our mother Esther to say, yes, Lord, be it done according to your will. Amen? Amen. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this was the Ahasuerus who reigned over 127 provinces. It's greenlit. Provinces. Ah. How's that? Yes. From India to Ethiopia. In those days when King Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, in the citadel, that in the third year of his reign he made a feast of all his officials and servants, the powers of Persia and Media, Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the splendor of his excellent majesty for many days, 180 days in all, and when these days were completed, the king made a feast lasting seven days for all the people who were present in Shushan, the citadel, from great to small, in the court of the garden of the king's palace. There were white and blue linen curtains fastened with cords of fine linen and purple on silver rods and marble pillars, and the couches were of gold and silver on mosaic pavement of alabaster, turquoise, white, and black marble. And they served drinks in golden vessels, each vessel being different from the other, with a royal wine in abundance according to the generosity of the king. In accordance with the law, the drinking was not compulsory, 
For so the king had ordered all the officers of his household that they should do according to each man's pleasure. Queen Vashti also made a feast for the women in the royal palace which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day when the start of the king was when the heart of the king was merry, the wine he commanded, Mehuman, Biztha, Harbona, Bigtha, Abgatha, Zethar, and Carcass, seven eunuchs who served in the presence of the king Ahasuerus, to bring Queen Vashti before the king, wearing her royal crown, in order to show her beauty to the people and the officials, for she was beautiful to behold. But Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's command, brought by his eunuchs. Therefore, the king was furious, and his anger burned within him. Then the king said to the wise men who understood the times, for this was the king's manner towards all who knew the law and justice, those closest to him being Karshena, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Maris, Marsena, and Mem Memcumen, Mem Memucan the seven princes of Persia and Media who had access to the king's presence and who ranked highest in the kingdom. What shall we do to Queen Vashti according to the law because she did not obey the command of King Ahasuerus brought to her by the eunuchs? The, then, and Memucan answered before the king and the princes, Queen Vashti has not only wronged the king, but also the princes and all the people who are in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus. For the queen's behavior will become known to all women so that they will, be, they will despise their husbands and their eyes when they, sorry, so that they will despise their husband in their eyes when they report King Ahasuerus commanded Queen Vashti to be brought in before him, but she did not come. That very day, the noble ladies of Persian media will say to all the king's officials that they have heard of the behavior of the queen. Thus, there will be excessive contempt and wrath. If it pleases the king, let a royal decree go out from him and let it be recorded in the laws of the Persians and Medes so that it will not be altered, that Vashti shall come no more before King Ahasuerus and let the king give her royal position to another who is better than she. When the king's decree, which he will make, is proclaimed throughout all his empire, for it is great, all wives will honor their husbands, both great and small. And the only reply, and the reply pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Memucan. Then he sent letters to all the king's provinces, to each province in its own script, and to every people in their language, that each man should be master in his own house and speak in the language of his own people. After these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus subsided, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what she had decreed against and what had been decreed against her. Then the king's servants who attended him said, Let beautiful young virgins be sought for the king. Let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather all the beautiful young virgins to Shushan, the citadel, into the women's quarters under the custody of Haggai, the king's eunuch, custodian of the women, and let beauty preparations be given to them. And let the young woman who pleases the king be queen instead of Vashti. This thing pleased the king, and he did so. In Shushan the citadel was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, <laughs> the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. Kish had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captives who had been captured with Jeconiah, the king of Judah, from Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And Mordecai... <laughs> had uh, brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, into his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. The young woman was lovely and beautiful. When her father and mother died, Mordecai <laughs> took her as his own daughter. So it was when the king's command and decree was heard, and when many young women were gathered at Shushan the citadel, 
under the custody of Haggai, and Esther was also taken to the king's palace in the care of Haggai, the custodian of the women. Now the young woman pleased him, and she obtained his favor, so he readily gave beauty preparations to her besides her allowance. Then seven choice maidservants were provided for her from the king's palace, and he moved her and her maidservants to the best place in the house of the women. Esther had not revealed her uh, people or her family, for Mordecai Yay! had charged her not to reveal it. And every day Mordecai Yay! placed in front of the court of the women's quarters to learn of Esther's welfare and what had happened to her. Each young woman had a turn and came in to go to the king Ahasuerus after he had completed 12 after she had completed 12 months of, of preparation according to the regulations for women, for thus were the days of their preparation appointed, six months with the oil of myrrh, six months with perfumes and preparations for beautifying women. Thus prepared each young woman who went into the king, and she was given whatever she desired to take with her from the women's quarters to the king's palace. In the evening she went, and in the morning she returned to the second house of women to the custody of Shashgaz, and the king's eunuch, uh, who was the king's eunuch, to, be, uh, to keep the concubines. So she would go to the king again. She would not go to the king again unless the king was delighted in her and called her by name. Now when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, <laughs> Who had taken her as his daughter to go into the king, she requested nothing but what Haggai, the king's eunuch, the custodian of the women, advised. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. So Esther was taken to the king Ahasuerus into the royal palace in the tenth month, which is the month of Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. The king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast, the feast of Esther for all his officials and servants. And he proclaimed a holy day in the provinces and gave gifts according to the generosity of a king. When virgins were gathered together a second time, Mordecai <laughs> sat within the king's gate now Esther had not revealed her family or her people, just as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther obeyed the command of Mordecai um, as when she was brought up by him. In those days, while Mordecai sat within the king's gate, two of the king's eunuchs, Big Ken and Teresh, doorkeepers because the, of the furious and sought, I'm sorry, doorkeepers became furious and sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. So the matter became known to Mordecai, who had, t who had told Queen Esther, and Esther informed the king in Mordecai's name. And when the inquiry was made into the matter, it was confirmed, and both were hanged on the gallows, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles in the presence of the king. After these things, King Ahasuerus promoted Haman, <laughs> son of Hameth, Hamed, son, son of Hamedatha, Hamedatha, the Agagite, and advanced him, and set him, well, and set his seat above all the princes who were known, who were with him, and all the king's servants who were within the king's gate bowed and paid homage to Haman, for so the king had commanded concerning him. But Mordecai would not bow or pay homage. Then the king's servants who were within the king's gate said to Mordecai, Why do you transgress the king's command? Now it happened when they spoke to him daily that he would not listen to them, that he told it to Hanan, to see whether Mordecai's words would stand. For Mordecai had told them that he was a Jew. 
when Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow or pay him homage, Haman was filled with wrath, but he disdained to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had told him of the people of Mordecai. Instead, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews who were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus. When the people of Mordecai, or in the people of, oh, uh, wow, the people of Mordecai. In the first month, which is the month of Nisan, the twelve, in the twelfth year of, of King Ahasuerus, they cast per that is the lot before Haman to determine the day of the second month or of the month until it is until it fell on the twelfth month which is the month of Adar then Haman said to King Ahasuerus that there is a certain people scattered and dispersed among the people in the providences of your kingdom that in in the provinces of your kingdom their laws are different from all other peoples and they do not keep the king's laws therefore it is not fitting for the king to let them remain if it pleases the king let a dis a decree be written that they be destroyed and i will pay ten thousand talents of silver into the hands of those who do the work to bring it to the king's and to bring it to the king's treasures so the king took his signet ring from his hand and gave it to haman the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and the enemy of the Jews. And the king said to Haman, The money and the people are given to you to do with them as it as seems good to you. The king's scribes were called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and a decree was written according to all that Haman commanded to the king's scribes. And to the governors and officials, to all the people, to every providence according to the script, it was, and to every, wait, and to every people in their language, in the name of King Ahasuerus, it was written and sealed with, with the king's signet ring. And all the letters were sent to the countries and to all the king's provinces to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in the day on the 13th day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, to plunder their possessions. A copy of the document was issued as law into every providence, being published for all people, that they should be ready for the day for that day. And the couriers were and the couriers went out, hastened by the king's command, and the decree was proclaimed in Shushan the citadel. So the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Shushan was perplexed. When Mordecai learned all that had happened, oh, my bad. He tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city. He cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He was as far as the front of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. In every province where there was the king's command and decree arrived, there was a great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and eunuchs came out and told her, and the queen was deeply distressed. When she saw the garments, to, or she sent garments to clothe Mordecai. Hey! and take this sackcloth away from him, but he would not accept them. Esther then called Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs, whom he had appointed to attend to her, and she gave him a command concerning Mordecai to learn what and why this was. So Hathak went out to Mordecai in the city square and was in front of the king's gate. And Mordecai told him that uh, all that had happened to him and the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries to destroy the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the written decree for their destruction, which was given at Shushan, that he might show that 
I'm sorry, that he might show it to Esther and explain to her and that he might command her to go into the king and make supplication to him and plead before him for her people. So Hathak returned and told Esther the words of Mordecai. So Esther spoke to Hathak and and gave him a command for Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king who has not been called, he has but one law, put all to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go in to the king these 30 days. So they told Mordecai, Esther's words, and Mordecai told them to answer Esther, do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai. Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise, so and so I will go to the king, which is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai Yay! went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Now it happened on the third day that Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the king's palace across from the king's house while the king sat in his royal throne in the royal house facing the entrance of the house. So it was when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court that she found favor in his sight and the king held uh, held out to Esther the golden scepter that was his hand. Then Esther went near and touched the top of the scepter The king said to her, What do you wish, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given to you, up to half the kingdom. So Esther answered, If it pleases the king, let the king and Haman come come today to the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, Bring Haman quickly, that he may do as Esther has said. So the king and Haman went to the banquet that Esther had prepared. At the banquet of the wine, the king said to Esther, what is your petition? It shall be granted to you. What is your request up to half the kingdom? It shall be done. Then Esther answered and said, my petition and request is this. If I have found favor in the sight of the king and it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, Then let the king and Haman come to the banquet, which I will prepare for them. And tomorrow I will do as the king has said. So Haman went out that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate and that he did not stand or tremble before him, he was filled with indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home, and he sent and called for his friends and his wife, Zeresh. Then Haman told them of his great riches, the multitude of his children, everything in which the king had promoted him, and how he had been advanced him above the officials and servants of the king. Moreover, Haman said, Besides Queen Esther, invited no one but me to come in with the king to the banquet that she prepared. And tomorrow I am invited by her along with the king. Yet all this avails me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai, the Jew, sitting at the king's gate. Then with his wife Zeresh and all his friends said to him, Let a gallows be made, fifty cubits high, and in the morning suggest to the king that Mordecai be hanged on it. 
Then go merrily with the king to the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman. So he had the gallows made. That night the king could not sleep, so one was commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs, the doorkeepers, who had sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. Then the king said, What honor or dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai for this? And the king's servants who attended him said, Nothing has been done for him. So the king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the king's palace to suggest that the king hang Mordecai (laughs) on the gallows that had been prepared for him. The king's servant said to him, Haman, is there standing in the court? And the king said, let him come in. So Haman came in. And the king asked him, what shall be done for the man whom the king delights to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, whom would the king delight to honor more than me? And Haman answered the king, for the man whom the king delights to honor Let a royal robe be brought, which the king has worn, and a horse on which the king has ridden, which has a royal crest placed on its head. Then let this robe and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that he may array the man whom the king delights to honor. Then parade him on horseback through the city square and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Then the king said to Haman, Hurry, take the robe and the horse as you have suggested, and do so for Mordecai, the Jew who sits within the king's gate. Leave nothing undone for all that you have spoken. So Haman took the robe and the horse, arrayed Mordecai, and led him on horseback through the city square, and proclaimed before before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Afterward, Mordecai went back to the king's gate, but Haman hurried to his house, mourning and with his head covered. When Haman told his wife, Zeresh, and all his friends everything that had happened to him, his wise men and his wife Zeresh said to him, If Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall, is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him, but will surely be, but will surely fall before him. While they were still talking with him, the king's eunuchs came and hastened to bring Haman to the banquet with which Hester had prepared. So the king and Haman went to dine with Queen Esther. And on the second day, at the banquet of wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you, and what is your request up to half of the kingdom? It shall be done. Then Queen Esther answered and said, If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, Let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. For we have been sold, my people and I, to be destroyed and to be killed and to be annihilated. Had we been sold as male and female slaves, I would have held my tongue, although the enemy would never compensate for the king's loss. So King Asherus answered and said to Queen Esther, Who is he? Where is he? Who would dare presume to in his heart? to do such a thing. And Esther said, the adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. So Haman was terrified before the king and queen. Then the king arose 
and in his wrath from the banquet and in his wrath from the banquet of wine rose okay and went into the palace garden but Haman stood before Queen Esther pleading for his life for he saw that evil was determined against him by the king. When the king returned from the palace garden to the, pal to the place of the banquet of wine, Haman <laughs> had fallen across the couch where Esther was. Then the king said, will he also assault the queen while I'm in the house? As the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. <laughs> now Haberna, one of the eunuchs said to the king, look, the gallows, 50 feet, 50 cubits high, where Haman Yay! made for Mordecai, Yay! who spoke good on the king's behalf, is standing at the house of Haman. Yay! Then the king said, hang him on it. So they hanged Haman. Yay! And on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai, Yay! then the king's wrath subsided. On that day, King Ahasuerus gave, uh, gave Queen Esther the house of Haman, the enemy of the Jews. And Mordecai came before, came before the king, for Esther had told how, how he was related to her. So the king took off his signet ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. And Esther appointed Mordecai over the house of Haman. Now Esther spoke again to the king, fell down at his feet, and implored him with tears to counteract the evil of Haman the Agagite, and the scheme which he hath divided against, uh, he has devised against the Jews. And the king held out the golden scepter towards Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king, and said, If it pleases the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and the thing seems right to the king, and I am pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, which he wrote to annihilate the Jews who are in the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil which, uh, that will come to my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my countrymen? Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther and Mordecai, Yay! the Jew, indeed, I have given Esther the house of Haman and they have, and they have hanged him on the gallows because he tried to lay his hand on the Jews. You, <laughs> you yourselves write a decree concerning the Jews as you please in the king's name and seal it with the king's signet ring for whatever it is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's signet ring no one can revoke so the king's scribes were called at that time in the third month which is the month of Sivan on the 23rd day and it, and it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded to the Jews, the, the satraps, the governors, and the princes of the provinces from India to Ethiopia, 127 provinces in all, to every province in its own script, to every people in their own language, and to the Jew in their own script and language. And he wrote in the, in the name of King Ahasuerus, sealed with the king's signet ring, and sent letters by couriers on horseback, riding on royal horses bred from swift steeds. And by these letters, the king permitted the Jews who were in every city to, their, uh, to gather together and protect their lives, to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the forces of any people or province that would assault them, both little children and women, and to plunder their possessions. On one day in all, in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, on the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, a copy of the document was to be issued as a decree in every province and published for all people so that the Jews would be ready on that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. The couriers who rode on the royal, horse, on, on royal horses went out, hastened and pressed on by their king's command. And the decree was issued in Shushan, the citadel. So Mordecai Yay! went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white with a great crown of gold and a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. And the Jews had light and gladness, joy and honor. And in every province and city, wherever the king, king's command and decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a holiday. Then many of the people of the land became Jews because the fear of the Jews fell upon them.
Now in the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar, on the thirteenth day, on the time, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. For the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred, in that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. The Jews gathered together in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to lay hands on those who sought their harm, and no one could withstand them because fear of them fell upon all the people. And all the officials of the provinces, the satraps, the governors, and all those doing the king's work helped the Jews because of the fear of Mordecai Yay! fell upon them. For Mordecai Yay! was great in the king's palace, and his fame spread throughout all the provinces. For this man Mordecai Yay! became increasingly prominent. Thus the Jews defeated, defeated all their enemies with a stroke of the sword, with slaughter and destruction, and did what they pleased with those who hated them. And in Shushan, the citadel, the Jews killed and destroyed 500 men. Also Pershan Datha, Dalphon, Aspartha, Paratha, Adelia, Aradatha, Fermatha, Ardasai, Ardari, Vajasatha, and tens of and and the ten sons of Haman, <laughs> Haman, <laughs> the son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, they killed, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. On that day, the number of those who were killed in Shushan, the citadel, was brought to the king, and the king said to Queen Esther, the Jews have killed and destroyed 500 men in Shushan, the citadel, and the ten sons of Haman. <laughs> What have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now what is your petition? It shall be granted to you. Or what is your further request? It shall be done. Then Esther said, If it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Shushan to do again tomorrow according to today's decree, and let Haman's <laughs> ten sons be hanged on the gallows. So the king commanded this to be done. The decree was issued in Shushan, and they hanged Haman's <laughs> ten sons. And the Jews who were in Shushan gathered together, and again on the fourteenth day of the month of Adar, and killed three hundred men at Shushan, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. The remainder of the Jews in the king's provinces gathered together and protected their lives, had rest from their enemies, and killed 75,000 of their enemies, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. This was on the 13th day of the month of Adar, and on the 14th of the month they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. But the Jews who were at Shushan assembled together on the 13th day, as well as on the 14th, and on the 15th day of the month they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore the Jews of the villages who dwelt in the unwalled towns celebrated the 14th day of the month of Adar with gladness and feasting, as a holiday and for sending presents to one another. And Mordecai Yay! wrote these things and sent letters to all the Jews near and far who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, to establish among them that they should celebrate yearly the 14th and 15th days of the month of Adar, as in the days on which the Jews had rest from their enemies, as, on, as the month which now turned from sorrow to joy for them, and from mourning to a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, of sending presents to one another and gifts to the poor. So the Jews accepted the custom which they had begun, as Mordecai Yay! had written to them, because Haman, <gasps> the son of Hamadatha the Agite, the enemy of all the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to annihilate them, and had cast Pur, that is, the lot, to consume them and destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letter that this wicked plot which Haman <gasps> had devised against the Jews should return on his own head, and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. So they called these days Purim, after the name Pur. Therefore, because of all the words of this letter, what they had seen concerning the matter and what had happened to them, the Jews established and imposed it upon themselves and their descendants and all who would join them that that without fail they should celebrate these two days every year, according to the written instructions and according to the prescribed time, that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation. 
every family, every province, and every city, that these days of Purim should not fail to be observed among the Jews, and that the memory of them should not perish among their descendants. Then Queen Esther, the daughter of Anahel and Mordecai, Yay! the Jew, wrote with full authority to confirm that this second letter about Purim, and Mordecai, Yay! sent letters to all the Jews to the 127 provinces of the kingdom of Ahursus with words of peace and truth to confirm that these days of Purim at their appointed times as Mordecai, Yay! the Jew, and Queen Esther had prescribed for them and as they had decreed for themselves and their descendants concerning matters of their fasting and lamenting. So the decree of Esther confirmed that these matters of Purim and it was written in the book and the king and King Exorcus imposed tribute on the land and on the islands of the sea. Now all the acts of his power and his might, and the account of the greatness of Mordecai, Yay! to which the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai, Yay! the Jew, was second to King Azursus, and was great among the Jews, and well received by the multitude of his brethren, seeking the good of his people, and speaking peace to all his countrymen. All right, let's bring it home. And King Ahasuerus imposed tribute on the land and on the islands of the sea. Now all the acts of power, uh, sorry, now all the acts of his power of his might and the account of the greatness of Mordecai, yeah. to which the king advanced him. Are they not written? Did we just read this? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Did you just finish it? All right. Good. <laughs> I was like, I'm reading going, gosh, oh, that looks, sounds so familiar. But um, <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. So, the story, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's like, it's, it's like the story of, of our people, as we mentioned, but it's the story of the, redem the redemption of humanity. Um, whoever, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord and then does his commandments and is faithful um, is then returned to God. And that's the ultimate goal of our being human, is we were created in the image and the likeness of God. And then we threw it away, almost as if uh, Esau did for a bowl of soup, we did it for an apple. It wasn't really an apple, but object lesson. We sold our birthright very cheaply for a piece of fruit. And now God says, okay, now you're, you're going to return to me. And that's the purpose of our lives. We're on a pilgrimage towards God and to constantly be uh, in that renovation phase. Um, I always get a kick out of uh, the fact that... Um, when, king, uh, when the king couldn't sleep um, and he wanted to be bored, he, he brought the acts of different things. But he, wa he wasn't sleeping that day, was he, when he listened? And he heard about Mordecai's, uh, what he'd done. And so that was a, a blessing. Um, the story, if, if we, can, I mean, we won't take a whole lot of time, but just to delve into a little bit, the king of Persia is like an example of God. Okay, he's definitely not God, and is, was, well, he was a man. But likewise, we cannot enter into the throne room of God uh, except when we have been called. And there was a preparation period that each of the women who were going to go into the king had to be prepared for. They didn't do it their own way. They did it according to the prescriptions. They didn't do it because they, they wanted to necessarily, uh, but they, they did it because that was the way that it was done. Okay, our soul is likened to these. And we are also in a process of being pre prepared to enter into the presence of the king. Um, and he says, you know, and the beautiful thing is that when he, held, when he held out the, uh, the, the scepter, um, he, he held it out to his queen, the one who had um, touched his heart the most. But in our journey, our king, um, he also will call us by name. And he will look into the heart of you and me and he will see, what do, what do I find in your heart, in my heart? I mean, is it a polished mirror where he can see his, his own reflection? Maybe so. Uh, it, or is he going to see rust and, and muck and schmutz on the mirror of my heart, which is right there right now. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. 
So we journey in this process, and there's a beautiful story. Uh, and we have fun with the story, and it's beautiful to remember it. Uh, but again, the remembrance of our mother, and she is in heaven right now, interceding for us. Esther, she's around the throne of God. Do you realize that? Because our God is the God of the living, and, and the saints, prophets, the righteous women, Deborah and Leah and Rachel, and all those, they're around the throne of God because they're alive more than you and I. That's our goal and our destiny. May it be so. Amen? Amen. Father, we ask for the blessing upon this time. Lord, would you continue to bless our fellowship and our meal together today. Lord, that you be praised and honored and glorified for truly you are the great King of Kings. All praise be unto you, O Lord, most high in both worlds, to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen.